Today's an impromptu podcast. It's going to be a message of hope when things seem hopeless. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. It's kind of tough putting this into like a show format. You know, I don't even know why I'm doing that. Because this was a spontaneous, it, it's something that came to me this morning. You know, I just kind of, I had a few thoughts. I was praying about it. And I realized that, you know, sometimes we struggle. Sometimes we do these sins over and over and over again. We're wondering why God cre- changed me, God, you know. So, and also, we're like, we get trapped in that. You know, you can get trapped in that. And so today, I did this. I just turned on my phone. I just started talking. Um, and, and I want to reach out to the people that are struggling with something. They love the Lord, but you're struggling with something. And I want to kind of give you some hope, man. There is hope. First Peter 3.15, you know. You got to have that answer for the reason of the hope that is in you. Jesus is our hope, but sometimes we're in the fire and it looks hopeless, you know. So I'm talking to you today. Um, there is hope, and I, I'm going to kind of show you by talking about Samson and Joseph, and maybe the girl with the issue of blood, if I remember correctly. So we are at the Good morning, everyone. It's Conrad saying, how are you? I think I have a message of hope today. You know, a message of hope can be birthed out of despair. And there are people that love the Lord, they're seeking God, but they're trapped in this horrible lifestyle. Sometimes they might be trapped in repetitive sin. And, and when I'm thinking of this, I'm thinking of like uh, several things are going through my spirit right now. In Second Timothy chapter 2, you know, God grants repentance. If you keep seeking God, he grants repentance. God's got to grant it. And, you you know, I've been there where you just keep seeking God. Like, Lord, change me. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me, God. And you're desperate. And then you find yourself messing up again. You know, and then and then God grants repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. That you can recover yourself out of the snare of the devil. And in a in a recent Facebook Live... Uh, one of the comments was talking about cleaning ourselves up before we do ministry. And I'm going to tell you what, you're never going to be <laughs> that clean. I mean, no matter where you are, if you sit there and you think that you're holy and pure, while we strive to be holy and pure, yes, the Bible says to do that. But God God can point something out. You're, I, I, I just have a hard time believing that. We in our own strength, without Jesus Christ, without the blood of Jesus Christ, without the grace of Jesus Christ, can be holy and pure on our own, right? And I'm going to tell you something. It's not about us. It's about God's plan. It's about God's plan. And we're talking about Samson today, and maybe even Joseph. Samson is in uh, the Judges, like 13, 14, 15, 16, maybe 17, I don't know. But I want to tell you something. That dude had a call on his life. An angel was brought to his dad, I think his dad's name was Manoah, and told him what was going to happen. And can you imagine being the kid your whole life, your parents are saying, hey, you know, an angel said you're going to do this, you're going to do that. And he uh, had all this pressure to fulfill his calling. Yet when we look at Samson... When we look at Samson and we read about him today, we think, what a buffoon. I mean, it's the fleshy, knee-jerk reaction. But I want to say, let's put ourselves in Samson's shoes for a second, okay? Let's say that he has an iniquity in him, you know? The guy liked girls, you know? He had, he kind of fell in that area, and then, and then he kept messing up when Delilah kept saying, hey, well, tell me what's the secret of your strength. And you're sitting here going, man, this guy isn't too bright. Well, maybe it's not that he's not too bright. Maybe he's got, there's an iniquity in him, you know? Uh, and I'm going to talk about it this way. Have you ever been in a sin 
to where you just can't get out of that sin without God. The sin where you're like, man, I did it again. And you fall to your knees like, man, Lord, help me. I, I, I need out of this. Create it in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. You know, and it. some people find it so easy to repent. You know, like people that are skinny, <laughs> they can push the plate away. The weight loss is a really good example. Or smokers, you know. Um, some people can just quit smoking. You know, I've never had that problem but my hat is off to some of those people that just say, okay, I made up my mind one day. Made up my mind one day, and um, I just decided to quit smoking. Or I made up my mind one day, I just decided to lose weight. You know? And I'm going to tell you what. Usually, in the testimonies on my page, God changes people when they're at their worst, when they're at their pit, when they're in desperate You know, like the woman with the issue of blood. She was desperate, man. Desperate, brother. She she tried everything. She tried doctors. She spent all of her money. And then she goes and and she presses through the crowd, which she would probably be stoned for because she was unclean. She was bleeding, right? I'm not sure. I don't really remember the, the law there, but I don't think she should have been in that crowd legally. You know, she had an issue of blood. So... She wasn't without the camp, you know, and she pressed on and she touched Jesus and he says virtue had went out of him. She touched him when she was at her worst. She was at her lowest point. So we're talking about Samson here. We we look back at him. We think, man, the guy wasn't too bright, but let's dig a little bit deeper. Maybe he had a real problem. You know, he just couldn't stop repeating that dumb thing. How many of us have done a dumb thing over and over and over again? And we're like, Lord, help me. I got a call on my life. Lord, and, and th- th- I'm going to move to that about the me, me, me thing in a second. You know you've got that call on your life, and your parents keep telling you, yeah, an angel showed up, and you got all this pressure to do right. However, inside of you, you still keep messing up over and over and over again. And the devil makes it really easy for you to do so. So you keep doing it, and then you loathe yourself for doing it. I always kid with people, but this is how the devil works. The devil, he shows you the good of evil. He don't show you the hangover. He don't show you the consequences. He shows you the party. And then after you give in, then he beats you up for sinning. Did he try to get you to do? And, and then you jump right on in with that self-loathing. And then you're in a pit of despair that kind of you dug yourself, you know? Should never took that first drink. Should never had that cigarette. You know, that first one, you know? And um, so there you are. And there's a point when you're on your knees, you're asking God, change me, oh God, create within me a new heart, you know, renew a right spirit like David did, you know? And um, when you're there, you, you do some serious self-examination you want to fix it you know you want to fix things and i'm sure samson might he may have been in this scenario i was also going to talk about joseph you know joseph he had those dreams there was a call on his life he uh we see his mistakes now we look back people i'm going to tell you what when we make mistakes and it's it's kind of a good thing because (laughs) you can look at it from a good perspective because when we overcome it we can tell people how to get out of that mess you know, seek Jesus, and we can show people to not get in the mess that we ran. All right, Joseph, um, he didn't make mistakes like Samson did. I mean, I might not have revealed the dream <laughs> to my family, but uh, maybe maybe his dad taught him how to grow up prophetic. Who knows? I want you guys to share your dreams, you know, because his dad was prophetic. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, they had dreams. They had a relationship with the Lord, so they're not going to tell their kids not to share their dreams, right? And look at Joseph, a completely different type of life than Samson. Um, You know, Joseph had those dreams, and then one day he went from the pit to the palace, like in a day, man. And I want to tell you something. When I said I'm going to talk about the me, 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 me thing, um, a lot of us don't want our reputation damaged, you know, our character, our name. 
And it's really, we really should be focusing on God's name, the name of God. We really should be focusing on God's plan. What is God's plan? So I want to encourage you with both Samson, okay, Samson, man, he his iniquity, he got his hair cut off, he lost his strength, they gouged out his eyes, they were making fun of him. I mean, put yourself in his shoes for a second. Isn't that about as bad as it can get? I mean, he, he was really loathing himself. Joseph was in the prison the day that he stood before Pharaoh, you know? Nobody was bragging on his dream interpretation gift. You know, he they just let him there to rot. I mean, you know, that's what you feel like. You can, like, why am I here? Why am I here? Well, I'm going to tell you what, man. In, in Joseph's life, Joseph, he was betrayed by his family, falsely accused of rape, sold as a slave, put in a prison. I mean, all these bad things happened to him. And I, I'm sure he probably had some... Why me, Lord? And then in Genesis fifty twenty, when his brothers were talking to him, he says, you know, you guys planned evil against me, but it was God's plan to save many people alive. Joseph understood in all of that that God had a plan. God had a plan, and you had to go through this fire for it to happen. Jesus went to the cross for the plan of salvation. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they knew God had a plan going in. They didn't probably didn't know what it was, but the whole nation was saved because they willingly went through the fire. Samson, in his death, like, Lord, I want to avenge me in my eyes, you know? Well, Samson killed more Philistines in his death. Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. It ain't about me. It ain't about Samson. It's about the Lord. It's about his plan. Are you catching the football here? It's not about my ministry. It's not about my jet. It's not about my big sanctuary. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. We need to point to Jesus. And even when we're struggling with things, point people to Jesus. So Samson, um, that call, remember, can you imagine rehearsing the call in your life you know the the parents are telling you what it is over and over and over again and you got all this pressure and you got all this iniquity and you're not too bright and you you keep messing up and here you are grinding in the dungeon with your eyes out and god uses samson to kill more philistines in his death than he did while he was alive amen that's carrying your cross, following God, following God's plan. We've got to die to self. It ain't about us. Anyway, I want to encourage you. These desperate sounding situations I've been mentioning, keep in mind, God is on the throne. He sees everything. He watches everything. He knows you're struggling. And just keep going, man. Don't give up. Don't let. I've had people say they want to give up. And I'm saying, look, then the devil wins. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep seeking God, and he will grant you repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that you can recover yourself out of the snare of the devil. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, and in it meditate day and night. Don't stop reading the word. Don't stop praying. Keep seeking God, and he will lift you, like Jeremiah, out of the pit with some dirty rags. He'll lift you up, man. I want to encourage you. Father God, I just pray for those people right now that are struggling. Lord, I, that they have the victory in Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you love them. You care for them. And even these things that we just kind of keep messing up on, Lord, that, that you will clean us up. Lord, I pray that you clean us up and put our feet upon the rock of Jesus Christ. Change us, O oh God. Make us brand new, Lord. Make us a new creation. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. Help us to walk in it, Lord. Clean us up. You know, the words that I've spoken to you, Jesus said, have cleansed you. Uh, in, the, in the Bible, it also says, wash your husbands, wash your wives with the water of the word. Get in the word. With the word, you will have good success. Jesus is the word. 
His words will cleanse you. Don't give up. Keep going. I want to encourage you that even when things look bad, God has a plan. And guess what? One day, one day we're going to stand up there and he's going to say, well done. Don't you want to hear that? Don't you want to hear that? I do. God bless you. Thank you for being in my life. If this has touched you, please share this with your friends and family on social media. To we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at comraderocks.net.